job. She should have resigned the day of this shooting. She did not. She should have been fired the day of this shooting. She was not. Acting Director Rowe at least acknowledged that their failure to secure the roof from where the shooter fired was indefensible. That being said, he continued the pattern we have seen from the Biden administration of stonewalling in this hearing. In the immediate wake of the shooting, the Secret Service official spokesperson sent out a tweet saying, the Trump team never asked for additional security. We did not, we never denied them additional security. In fact, we gave them additional security. We now know that tweet is a lie. <coughs> the person who sent it, the Secret Service spokesperson, still has his job. The acting director refused to answer whether he personally approved that tweet. He refused to answer whether the then director approved that tweet. We now know because the Washington Post broke the story, not because the Secret Service told it, but because the Washington Post broke the story that repeatedly President Trump's team and President Trump's detail asked for additional agents, additional counter snipers, additional equipment, and repeatedly the Secret Service said no. When I asked the acting director at the hearing how many times did they ask for additional protection, he didn't know the answer to that. When I asked how many times were they denied, he didn't know the answer to that. When I asked who denied it, he said he didn't know the answer to that. He couldn't answer if it was him, couldn't answer if it was the previous director. He started talking about, well, there's a committee, and this committee goes to that committee, and, and it, it was a marvel of bureaucratic nonsense. Apparently, in the Biden Secret Service, the buck stops nowhere. Nobody has responsibility. I asked him, is the individual who denied additional coverage for President Trump the same individual who denied coverage for Robert F. Kennedy Jr.? It's utterly indefensible that RFK went months without Secret Service protection. His father was assassinated running for president. His uncle was assassinated when he was president. RFK Jr. had had multiple death attempts. And yet the Biden administration refused to give him Secret Service protection until after the attempted assassination of President Trump. I believe that decision was political. I believe that decision was partisan and the political leadership of Secret Service understaffed the security detail of President Trump for the same reason they did not provide security to RFK Jr. There are obvious questions that need to be asked. Why were there not more agents assigned? When the shooter at 3 o'clock came through the magnetometer with a rangefinder, why was he not questioned? Why was he not detained? Today, the acting director said, well, it was a civilian rangefinder that you'd use on a golf course. Well, the last I checked, the guy wasn't there to play golf. There is no benign use for a rangefinder at that rally. And yet they didn't question him when he came in with the rangefinder, and they didn't question him two and a half hours later when they saw him using the rangefinder to measure the distance to where the president was speaking. He provided no answer as to why the roof was not secured. He provided no answer as to why there was no aerial support, there were no drones, there were no helicopters. And he provided no answer as to why the local law enforcement they were relying on could not communicate with Secret Service. We now know that one minute and 57 seconds before the first shot was fired, bystanders spotted the shooter on the roof with a rifle. We've all seen the videos on X. Pointing out, he has a gun, he's on the roof, pointing it out to local law enforcement. That was a minute and 57 seconds before the first shot. If local law enforcement was able to speak to Secret Service, they would have pulled President Trump from the podium and he never would have been shot and nobody else would have been killed. We also know that a local police officer climbed up to that roof to examine directly what was happening and the shooter pointed his rifle at him. The local police officer ducked down, fell to the ground. That was 24 seconds before the first shot was fired. 
Presumably that officer has a radio, but the Secret Service hasn't told us that. Presumably with the radio, the instant he saw a gunman on the roof with a rifle, you would be in the radio saying, shooter, shooter, gun, gun. 24 seconds is a lot of time for a Secret Service detail to go and pull President Trump down. It's a lot of time for a counter sniper to take out that sniper. The only rational inference is that local police was not able to talk to Secret Service. And from their testimony today, they've done nothing to improve it. Now, another set of questions that I asked, what's the relevant size of President Trump's detail compared to Joe Biden's detail compared to the First Lady's detail? Secret Service refused to answer that question. The obvious follow-up is, what is the rel relative threat level? How many threats are directed at Donald J. Trump? How many threats have been directed at President Biden? How many threats have been directed at the First Lady? Those are simple questions that require accountability. I hope and expect we will get them. But the critical question, and I want to underscore the call that has come from multiple senators for whistleblowers. I believe the rational inference from the evidence we know now is it was political bias at the top, at the leadership of the Secret Service, that led to insufficient agents and insufficient resources being devoted to protecting President Trump. And if it is true, we need to see on writing the discussion of why they didn't act sufficiently to keep the president safe. All right, Mike Lee's next. The late Associate Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr., used to say that there's a point of contact in every case, and he defined that point as the place where the boy got his finger caught in the machinery. Comparing that statement here, we might say it's a point of failure. Where are the points of failure that the Secret Service should have acknowledged? Where are the points of failure that after 17 days since this assassination attempt, the Secret Service still hasn't even answered the most basic questions. Look at, let's look at what some of those were. First of all, why on earth did they ever let Donald Trump take the stage? He'd already been identified as a suspicious person, a suspicious person who had entered with a rangefinder, something that one doesn't normally bring to a political rally. They otherwise regarded him as suspicious. They had taken photos of him. They had sent those things along to the Secret Service. Why on earth did they not remove President Trump from the stage after spectators and local law enforcement assigned to help protect the president had noticed that there was a guy with a rifle on a roof? By the way, it was a sloped roof, and uh, noticeably absent today was the sloped roof defense. I don't understand exactly well, what role that played in their initial pronouncements. Now, after this attack, uh, maybe they got roofied or otherwise convinced to adopt a feigned slope, sloped roof defense, but that was absurd, as was the Secret Service's initial denials of the repeated requests made to the Secret Service for additional protection. Also unanswered, but that falls squarely within the context of the uh, point of contact or the point of failure. Why on earth did the snipers assigned to the second story window with a clear view of that infamous sloped roof, a clear view of where the shooter stood and tried to kill President Trump? Why was that manned initially with snipers, with sharpshooters, and then abandoned at some point before the shooting took place? Now look, these are and should be obvious and easy basic questions for the Secret Service to answer. And they have had no fewer than 17 days since the attack to answer these questions. These are questions that they should have started asking and probably should have uh, been able to answer within 24 hours. And yet again and again and again, what I heard, what my colleagues heard, what you heard if you were watching, was worth looking into it. I'm sorry, that doesn't cut it. These are legitimate questions. And for the reasons that we've identified, it's not as though the Secret Service has comported itself in a manner that calls out to us to defer to them, to have confidence in them. Nobody wants to believe the worst, to suspect the worst of, about what happens within government. 
But when they lie to us repeatedly, then when they refuse to answer the most basic questions, when they almost willfully decline to take any of the most basic precautions in order to protect the president, the former president, and I hope the next president of the United States, one has to wonder. Remember, King David didn't personally kill Uriah the Hittite, but he let him go out into a battlefield where he knew there was an imminent risk of grave bodily injury, and he made sure he didn't have adequate protection. We've got to get to the bottom of these questions to make sure that Donald Trump was not intended to be a Uriah the Hittite. Well done, Bathsheba. So, yeah, we, have to, we have to get King David his own representation. Uh, like John Cornyn, go ahead. Well, it's obvious there were multiple points of failure on this day where it, uh, that resulted in the loss of one life and three injured individuals, including the former president of the United States and Republican nominee for president in 2024. Some of the things that struck me were, for example, the drone that was used by the shooter to surveil the grounds to see where everybody was and where they were not. And um, amazingly, when the Secret Service tried to use their drone, they said there was a network congestion. Uh, I asked the obvious question, why if the shooter's drone worked, why didn't the Secret Service's drone work? And they said, well, we're, we're looking into that. Secondly, the, as you know, the uh, drones are ubiquitous these days, and they can also be weaponized. So there may, would not have been even the necessity uh, for the shooter to have a gun if he had an ability to deploy a weaponized drone that day, something that the, that the Secret Service was completely unprepared to deal with. I asked, do you have electronic warfare or jamming capability? And they said, well, we really can't talk about that here. Another one of their multiple points of failure. And then, as you've heard from my colleagues up here, the, the fact that a suspicious individual was identified, uh, the acting director wanted to say, well, it wasn't until we saw the gun that we know, knew he would be a problem or a threat. But the fact of the matter is, the Secret Service allowed President Trump to go on the stage without having adequately investigated this suspicious individual. If they had simply asked him to stand down while they investigated, they would have discovered the shooter, and this shooting uh, would never have occurred in the first place. Next, the Secret Service simply tried to delegate to local law enforcement their responsibilities, which are to keep their protectees safe. And the uh, acting director made the point of saying Secret Service are the elite in law enforcement, and I believe that's true. These are the best of the best. But then for some reason, when it came to pr providing protection to, for President Trump, they delegated this to local law enforcement, obviously people less trained to deal with the sorts of threats that uh, they saw that day, resulting in another point of failure. But finally, the lack of communication or ability to communicate the threat to the agents on the stage with the president was another point of failure. Because if they had been able to have simply a walkie-talkie or radio, which would have communicated from the field directly to the agents, they could have asked the president to keep his seat and to stay out of harm's way. So thanks to, uh, thanks to the uh, divine intervention, President Trump did not lose his life that day. I told him that it's obvious God has other plans for him. But the fact of the matter is the so, that, uh, that the Secret Service has now been transferred since 2003 to the Department of Homeland Security. Now, why should that cause any of us concerns? Well, you've seen the job that the Department of Homeland Security is doing at the southern border with about 10 million people released in the interior of the United States. Alejandro Mayorkas should have resigned years ago, completely incompetent, lied to Congress repeatedly, and now he's in charge of the Secret Service because they're part of the Department of Homeland Security. Obviously, we need to look at this matter from top to bottom, and we need to fix the uh, Secret Service so no future 
candidates or existing office holders are exposed to this sort of threat again. Thanks, John. I just want to put an explanation point on this and we'll open it up to questions. I think my colleagues did an excellent job of pointing out both the individual and systemic failures by the Secret Service on the day of this assassination uh, attempt. And that's why we need a crisis intervention team to go in right now. We don't have to wait to see what the findings are from this, from all the studies that we're doing right now. That being said, we need to make sure we uncover every stone. And that's why we need some type of an independent, non-political commission to dive deep into this. So we'll stop there. Some questions, Josh in the back, go ahead. Was there ever any discussion in the planning stage about communicating from the advance team to Trump's security detail or the campaign risks of the clear line of sight from the AGR building? We, Based on your discussions with Secret we Service. We haven't got any of that. They, they haven't told us that. With the, I mean, the simple question is, is why wasn't it inside the perimeter to begin with? That'd be the simple question, right? That hasn't even been answered. Uh, we haven't been told how many how many rings of perimeters that they have. Did they have one, two, or three? I mean, obviously they had two, but did they have the third one to push out? This is only 150 yards, 140 yards from, from the platform. It, it, when you're setting up a perimeter, you take all points of advantage. You take the water tower and you take every building around there that has direct sight. That is your third perimeter. That's your outer perimeter. So there's no, there was obviously no communication about it, but it would be the Secret Service that would be in charge of setting out the site planning to begin with. So I would assume not, but they haven't told us. You know, I think the frustrating to me is that there, that there was no standard of operating uh, procedures defined or followed. Where should this first perimeter be? How far should it go out? Should there be any buildings left within 500 yards of the president with a direct line? Well, obviously there should not be. Um, w when do we decide to give President Trump more protection? There seemed to be no guidance. It seemed to be too political of an opportunity here. John? Uh, well, sir, I was going to ask, I know, I think it came up during the hearing that uh, someone said they felt they were about 1,500 people short in terms of manpower. Right. Is it conceivable that, that it's a budget issue, that they don't have the coverage because they don't have the financial resources? Yeah. I think we've doubled their budget in the last 10 years. They have 8,000 agents protecting 33 people. That uh, They need to be able to roll up the people that are sitting and doing nothing in those offices. And I say nothing. I don't mean, I shouldn't be that cavalier. They are doing important things. But obviously, uh, in this situation, President Trump probably needed four or five times that. I would argue that it would be next to impossible to make that particular site uh, safe for the president. Um, it's, it's going to take more than just throwing money at it. And I think certainly it starts with leadership. And that's what we're lacking right now is, is leadership. The, the AIC would be the one that would, the agent in charge, Senator, would be the one that mic? would ask that. Right? <laughs> you want to set the mic? Sorry, I just want to get it. I'm sorry. The, the AIC would be the agent in charge of the site. That would be the agent in charge of the whole uh, the, the whole venue that was setting up the, the uh, protective uh, perimeters would be the one that would set how many personnel he needs to guard it specifically. And so that would be one question that would need to be asked. Was a request given and was it denied? That'd be a simple communication because that should be, those site plans for, for, for uh, the setting up the perimeters, that should have been given out uh, to, I mean, that should be documentation. There's no question about it. I mean, when we used to do site planning, we would actually draw it out and that'd be part of the briefing. You would put it up on the wall or you'd put it out on emails, you know, tell you how long ago I, would do, I was doing it, but you'd put it up on the wall and you would actually assign here's building A, B, C, D or building one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever it is, and how many people it's going to take to secure that building and, and block off all, all those, all that whole perimeter. And that would be your personnel that you set by those perimeters. So, Without that, we don't know. We don't know actually how many people were actually needed to, to protect that site to make it secure. Well, but given, given what happened, I think it's indisputable that there were not sufficient agents assigned to protect Donald Trump. That for that location, that roof was not secured, there were not agents in place to be aware of, of the sniper, there were not agents in place, there were not counter snipers who had visibility on, 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 the, on the shooter. There was no aerial assets. We know from public reporting there have been multiple requests from the Trump team for additional uh, agents, for additional equipment, and that those requests have been turned down. At the hearing, I asked, what is the relative size of the Secret Service detail 
that was assigned to Donald Trump in Butler, Pennsylvania, compared to the Secret Service detail that is assigned to Joe Biden, compared to the Secret Service detail that is assigned to the First Lady. There were reports that on the day of the, uh, of the, of the rally, the Secret Service transferred agents from Donald Trump's detail to protect the First Lady. Now, look, it is important to protect the First Lady. But the acting director refused to answer any question about the relative size of how many agents are assigned. And what I believe happened is the Secret Service was treating Donald Trump as a former president. Former presidents are given Secret Service details, but not that extensive of Secret Service details. Typically, the threat profile a former president is facing is significantly less than Donald Trump is facing. Donald Trump is not just a former president. He is the Republican nominee to be president. And he is one of two people who is likely to be the next president of the United States. And it's why the request of the threat levels, how many threats, how many credible threats there are, is so important because this decision is supposed to follow the threats. And, and, and I believe what, what the Department of Homeland Security did, what Alejandro Mayorkas did, is they didn't want to assign that additional protection because they didn't want to confer, I guess, legitimacy to Trump. I think it is the very same reasoning that led them to deny a Secret Service de detail to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. because the fact that RFK Jr. is running is politically inconvenient to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris and giving Secret Service detail would legitimize it. If that's their reasoning, Congress and the American people deserve to see in writing why they said no, because if you're actually doing your job, the job of the Secret Service, there clearly should have been additional agents. There should have been an agent on that room roof. The shooter should have been detained and questioned, and there should have been aerial assets. None of those happened. And today, Secret Service answered none of those questions as to why they didn't happen. Go ahead. Anna Marshall, thank you. Uh, Fire Minister with AP. Um, you mentioned you guys would like an independent non-political commission. Can you talk about, first of all, what that would look like? Is that different than what's happening in the House side? They have a bipartisan commission that they've, um, you know, they've put up. Is this, is